We are up to the final match, and it is on, oh, good lord. And Brink gets depressed. It's a one versus one on Sentence. A Cheap Jaguar versus Orange Heart. Basically what's going down here is if Orange Heart wins, that is the end of the tournament. This is the final round. He takes the victory. If a Chief Jaguar wins, he has to win twice because he's coming from the loser's bracket. So onward and forward with this game. We've got a Chief Jaguar on the left. He is Cybran and it is a symmetrical cyber matchup. Orange Heart is on the right or the north, whichever you prefer. So that is going to be first land and second land for Orange Heart with a bit of power build here that looks something like a future air factory. Then on the south side, we have got a bit of a mess of a build. I did not mean that in that way, but I was trying to figure out what was going on and that was the first descriptor that slipped out. Jaguar is going for 71 power generators and a couple of mass extractors built with the ACU, second air factory. So basically what is going to go on here is that the north side is going to come out with a land advantage early in the game. Jaguar may get pushed back on the midpoint, which of course is bad for your health because there's a lot of reclaim up there. On the other hand, Orange Heart may get trumped out because first bomber is most definitively a thing. He kind of rescheduled a couple of things here, seeing a better way to place his adjacency, all the more power to him for being more efficient. Achieve Jaguar, of course, not changing his build any further. We've got the Hydro being built on the back. That would be an excellent thing to have in your arsenal when you are trying to get all of the mass, up mass extractor upgrades possible with this early reclaim. We've also got a Hunter out for Orange Heart. That's gonna hopefully deny any early engineers that might be wandering around in the area. There is an engineer out for Orange Heart as well, but not a combat unit from a cheap Jaguar. So it does look like Orange Heart is going to get some free reclaim out of all of this. Pending, of course, the bomber that will inevitably be built and sent towards the north side. The problem that I have with Settons in a one versus one situation is that it's difficult to balance your frontal assault and all of the other stuff going on in the map because you got to expand effectively if you are going to take control and whether that is by transport to maybe the rear portion of the base or to everything you never know or slowly but surely walking your eight your engineers out into the field and building those mass extractors which might lead to problems later on because if your opponent drops your land mass you may not be in a position to deny them you got to get out there somehow so it's interesting to see how different players tackle the problem and i'm always always up for learning something achieved is building a couple of air scouts to begin with to figure out exactly what is going on on the front line and of course this engineer is now dipping into the reclaim and that'll feed his addiction to T2 mass extractors as well as T1 land factories, of which he is queuing five. Actually, not as many as I thought he would. Hunter is gonna get around the back end of things. Of course, Engineer is going to be the primary target of such a raiding unit. In the meantime, this Mantis is skirting the outside edge, making sure that nothing slips through from a Chief Jaguar. Jaguar getting a couple of Mantis up into the front end now, but still not pushing his ACU and definitely not getting enough land factories online. He's got two air factories, he's got two land factories coming up, and this hunter is now slipping away into the back end of the base to hopefully kill off any engineers that are trying oh so vainly to expand. Looks like Orange Heart is going to be getting the vast majority of his mass extractors without dropping any engineers. He is simply going to struggle through the long ordeal of walking or rolling as it were with the engineers. Uh, Jaguar on the other hand is going for a jester. So this is going to be ultimate raid party. Nice. Maybe we'll see some interesting things happening here. Only one air factory, no hydro claimed for Orange Heart, so that is going to be a bit of an oddity. And we've got a third air factory happening for Achieve Jaguar. So that's going to put him in a strong control of air. And hopefully it'll let him recover from some of this other stuff that's going on, like the raiding and whatnot. So something to think about. 
Sutton's is not actually perfectly symmetrical, and while there is a roughly balanced amount of mass in reach of both players at a roughly even distance, there are things that are out of place. For instance, the Hydro is slightly closer to the south side than it is to the north side. So the Hydro is not as effective to get a hold of in the earliest portion of the game. However, there are other bonuses. Like, this Hydro is closer to the main build area of Rock if you're playing a multiplayer map. But since you're playing one player on each side, then that doesn't really come into play. So I have often wondered exactly how balanced Sentence is. But in the case of Mephi, with uh, that ACU building a T1 point defense on the front and delving into all of the reclaim that he could possibly ever wish for, this is not looking too great for a Chief Jaguar. He's also failing quite spectacularly in his early expansion. Jaguar is at 21 mass per tick. Orange Heart is at 39. Jaguar at 585 reclaim. Orange Heart at 3,700. And Jaguar is just now dropping the back end of the base. The Jester is going to wreak a little havoc though, killing off the build power that was going for power spam. We've also got a reclaim build power getting shot down. We've got the transport falling from the sky that Mephi was about to try to expand with, although he does have pretty much everything already queued. And we've got another Jester on the outside edge that is getting shot down by an interceptor. Expert little flick there on the controls. And that Jester will come out alive. So now Jaguar is going to be in a much better position because he's going to get this Jester over to this edge. He's going to kill off these Expansioneers, raid the Expansions themselves, and be able to... Oh my goodness! That was 5 HP from completion. 5. 5. That is going to be a successful raid on that side. That was so incredibly lucky, and yes, I did hear your ping. Oh, apparently we've crossed the 150 subline. Boom! Missed it with the 500-bit notification. Thank you. <laughs> um, let's get back focused here. Looks like we do have another Mantis slipping by. Jaguar going for aggressive Jester production from that factory. It's basically all he's building and interceptors from the other two. This is forcing Orange Hearts into a position where he must build mobile anti-air and try to get it to the outside edges of the map. Jesters are succeeding in killing off mass extractors here, there, and everywhere. Hopefully he can succeed in killing off that engineer before too much else is done about it. And on the north side, this is just getting reduced to rubble. So what we're seeing play out here is early aggression versus early eco-ish, kind of, sort of. And I think Jaguar is going to come out on the losing end of this because he simply doesn't have enough build power. If you take a look at Mephi, Mephi is already running 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 land factories. He's got three air factories almost complete with two more queued. He's at double Jaguar's mass income, double Jaguar's power income. And there is no amount of raiding that Jaguar can do to save himself from the doom that is falling upon him from the front line. Also, there's Navy in the water for Mephi. So Mephi just has double the tools to work with is essentially what we're getting down to. Jaguar's Jesters were a valiant effort and I like to see different play styles tried. Always experimenting makes the game a little bit more exciting, a little bit better off. But unfortunately, sometimes we run into a dud such as this and Jaguar not going for that early mass in the middle, I think straight up killed him. Orange Heart is already going for a T2 power generator in the center. He's got T2 on his ACU, uh, so he was able to struggle through that power stallage sometime prior to this point, and he is still reclaiming all that stuff. So if we take a look at Achieve Jaguar, 50 mass in, oh no, sorry, that's 50 reclaim. 27 mass income on a thousand reclaim. Orange Heart is at 10 freaking thousand reclaim barely even to keep it together with the power stall caused by that reclaim number and 44 to 50 mass steady income i don't know exactly what it is due to the power stall it is absolutely freaking lootly brutal oh look 
there's jesters that are queued over to the island as the transport is running in for the kill. Of course, we are going to see yet more carnage from these jesters, killing off the mass extractors again. But still, a cheap Jaguar, slow to expand. Oh, so slow to expand with that opening. I think he was counting on it happening a little earlier, where he was able to kill off the Expansioneers before they had built quite so much stuff. And in the end, while these Jesters might do some denting, they are not going to overcome. And that is a shame to see. But it isn't quite over yet. Jaguar is still expanding. He is not dead quite yet. And he is getting more build power online, although he does have a pretty severe lack of units as far as the comparison to Mephi is concerned. So in come the Jesters on this edge as well, picking off engineers as they see them and killing mass extractors as the opportunity arises. That factory there is still building T1 engineers and not mobile anti-air, but interceptors coming in. Those should eliminate the Jesters quite easily indeed. Mephi is now in both navies with a frigate out on the one. That is also going to be one more problem to add to achieve Jaguar's pile. And on the south, we've got a four engineer drop on the outside expansion. That is going to, yet again, cause another problem for achieve Jaguar. Also, we've got a bit of a point event creep. Cerberus turret getting placed right here. That is going to be within firing distance of the frontline units and nearly within striking distance against the factories. It is just barely out of range. Jaguar is going to lose the entire front end of his base. He's not going to be able to push these units back and therefore is going to get pushed harder and harder. Throwing out the GG there, he is going to walk into his own demise and that is the end of that. Well, I did not expect for the final on Settens to be over in under 12 minutes. That is kind of ridiculous. Achieve Jaguar acknowledging there, no reclaim. That is GG. I really like the experimentation though. It was an interesting opening. The gestures were cool, but we can all look at this and hopefully learn from it. Either you need some optimization on your build to hopefully get the gestures out more quickly, which will let you cripple the build power earlier, prevent these expansions, and hopefully allow you to contain the front player into the same amount of area as you have, or you need to forego the strategy until a later date. Go ahead and get your gunship rush up at some point, but you need to get enough units online that you can contest the front and get a little of that reclaim, because the amount of reclaim, good lord, that Orangeheart had at his disposal was ludicrous. That is gonna be a win for Orangeheart, taking the tournament, taking the avatar and the prize pool. I do not actually remember what it was. Let me queue up here and see where it was at. That is the fixed and equilibrium avatar and 15 euros. Second place goes to achieve Jaguar at 10 euro prize and five euros out to Blinchik for coming in third. And that, my friends, is going to rack, wrap up the Equilibrium Tournament. I'm gonna do an outro here. Stick around if you wish, because I will be doing a few things after this. But for everybody watching on YouTube, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for tuning in for yet another tournament. Next week, there will be another, and I hope it will be uh, slightly better than the Equilibrium tweaked version because it'll be a little bit more traditional. Thank you to each and every person who supported during this stream. And as always, I will see you in the next one.